Yeah, you're absolutely right, Don. They may turn around and try to put in WS4FC instead of uh, the club W4NC. Okay, um, official time is five seconds from 8.30 right now. Okay, well, I'll wait and see if Jim starts this thing off. And uh, we'll rock on from there. We're going to make this as painless as we can or painful as we can. I see KJ4FIN on. I see uh, Steve, and I wish I could remember his call sign off the top of my head. This is also a good test, Donna, how, who, who reads your uh, missives that you put out in regards to the club, the club notices. Uh, actually, I can see everyone that opens it and everyone who opens the newsletter link. And uh, of the 516 on the list, I think like 10 have unsubscribed. And 80% uh, uh, open the email. Yeah, who was that calling? I got half a headset on here. Station calling W1HRC, go ahead. Can anyone verify that my audio is working? Uh, uh, Dave here. I was actually calling you. Call Sounds Dave, good. You can prove the number is 9423593. The ID number figures 832. Nine, four, two, three, five, eight, nine, three. The Papa Whiskey is the FARC club call sign, lowercase over. WA4NOTW1HR. W4NC. Not heard W1HRC up. Hey, Stacy, I didn't hear him respond. Do you want to take the net and, and call it, or do you want me to call it? Whatever you'd prefer. Well, well you're eating. You're feeding your, your, your face. I'm always eating something. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much true. Oh, well, I'm you, you want me to do it tonight? At all. Uh, Oh, I was going to let Stacy do it. Mike, appreciate the offer tonight. Um, I want to make it as fast as I can. Uh, so I'll take it. You want to take it? Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. Everybody mute. We're not, we're not capturing the audio unless one of us keeps a microphone on.
This is Whiskey Sierra 4, November Charlie. Don, Winston-Salem, over. Stations, Oscar. 
Okay, I'm going to turn my radio down, Stacy. If you can monitor, in case somebody calls or unless Jim's on, one of the two of you, um, just monitor the the frequency for me. That way, I don't get echoes. I had to turn myself down because I couldn't hear. It was so strange. There's about a half a second delay between when I transmit and it, it's heard on your radios coming through the zoom that it uh, was really kind of unique. Anyway, can everybody hear me? Somebody wiggle your head. Affirmative. Yeah, you sound good. Affirmative. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can share a screen and put the right screen up. First, I want to remind everybody of this. Just know your W's, wear weight and wash. Okay, so wear a face covering if you have one or can find one and stay six feet apart and wash your hands or use sanitizer as often as possible. We are flattening the curve, it's working good and things are gonna start opening up tomorrow. And I think we're going to see some return of normalcy in the near future. So with that being said, let me get to the actual presentation of the night. 
what I'd like you to do, if you have questions, put your questions into the chat. That way um, it could be seen and Stacy will be letting me know if we have questions in chat and we'll try to answer those. There's been a lot of, con some confusion, I don't wanna say a lot, but there's been confusion about the ICS-213 general message form. And it is a unique form to use. Real quick history, it is part of the ICS structure. There are a ton of forms. There's about 35 different forms that we use in ICS. And they are there to enable us to have a structure, the use of common terminology, a common format, so it doesn't matter where in the country we go, we use the same form. There may be small additions to the form, but there will never be retractions. Localities have, the jurisdictions have the ability to modify these forms to fit them. For example, we've had ours modified, approved. Uh, locally, and it's also understood by the state, and they agreed with it. We've added to the 213 two small blocks, but you can't take anything away from it. And that gives everybody a uniform picture. It helps to promote the, what's called the common operating picture. The forms used by OXCOM, these are the forms that we all have to be familiar with is the ICS-205, which is the communications plan, the ICS-211, which is the check-in list. That's what you sign in on when you check into an incident. We're gonna discuss the ICS-213 general message form tonight. We're gonna to discuss a little bit about the ICS-214 activity log. We're just gonna to touch on it. And then the ICS-217A is an alpha, is the communication resource list. This is what most of you should already have. If you don't have it, please send me an email at aries at w4nc.com and I will send this list to you. We've taken the, two, the 217A list that we have has been coordinated with all the surrounding counties so that we do not uh, interfere with each other. If we have a wide scale event, we all have our own frequencies. We've identified them, we've all agreed to them, and that includes simplex frequencies as well, as and HF. So we've all got a format uh, that we can pick from. These are our channels. You need that list so you can program your radios. All right. Harlan, forgive yeah. me, uh, you, you still have the same screen up. Are you running through your uh, displays? I am. Well, I'm not seeing it. Nobody's seeing it? I don't know why it's not changing. No. How do I change that? See, know, know your W's. Are you sharing just PowerPoint? Uh, stop sharing and reshare what you're doing. Okay, because it says share screen. Yeah, and go to your your presentation. Okay. There's my presentation. Okay. Now, it, if it's, I just got up your your PowerPoint now. Okay. And it changed when you clicked. All right. All right. So it it does change now, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I don't know why it didn't change. Anyway, I'll hold that up real quick so everybody can copy down the list of forms. Um, I will actually have Terry, I'll present this to Terry and have him put it up in a uh, PDF format on the website so people can pull it down and you have that to review as part of our training. Okay. In the beginning, because these forms were initially developed by the forestry service, and they were not really designed initially to be sent by voice over the radio, they've adapted. Uh, for the most part, they were carried from the base camp to various people throughout because their, their camps would be spread out. And so somebody would hand carry it from one tent to another. 
you know, they may have communications in one tent, operations in another, logistics in another, et cetera. And so these message forms were being carried from place to place. They also work very well being faxed. And they can work and they do work for voice and digital traffic on radio, but there is some special processes we have to put in place because the original form, as I said, was designed to be hand carried, meaning you take it over, the person's gonna put their reply in the reply section, sign it, and you're gonna take it back to the tent next door. That's where it started. We've morphed it and it has morphed over the years and it works very well in a voice setting uh, via radio. We do have to do some special things for accountability, however. This is what our new approved form looks like. I know that's hard to see, uh, but there are two uh, things up here that have been changed. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, um, but right here, 1A, which is the message number, and 1B, which is the precedence. They're under the one line. And then down here at the bottom, so you know you're using the right form, it says ICS 213 WSFC dash OEM OXCOM. That's the official form. A fillable version of this in PDF will be added to the WN4, WS4, or correction, W4NC uh, website under the OXCOM documents tab as soon as Terry can get to it. All right, your general procedures. The message number you generate, and we'll talk more about those, the person that wants to send that message, they are the originator. It's their responsibility to write out what they want. They're going to fill out every part of that top of that 213, items one through seven, with the exception of 1A, and that's yours. Um, but you're going to help them, if necessary, write this out. But it's up to them to write it. Your assistance is in helping them write it brief, concise, and to the point. The originator sets the precedence, and you can explain that to them. Those precedents being, of course, operational immediate, priority, routine, and of course, emergency. Emergency is the top precedent followed by operational immediate. Ensure the originator signs that original message. Do not send a message that's not signed. That's the accountability to that person that originated that message. That ensures that you know they reviewed it and that they've approved it. And that keeps you out of a doghouse. You send the message exactly as it's written. If it's got misspelled words, poor grammar, bad punctuation, incomplete sentences, if it's written on a third grade level, doesn't matter. You send it exactly as it's written. You don't change the message at all. It's not your responsibility to be a grammar Nazi. You send it exactly as they wrote it. That's one of the biggest things that occurs. People try to correct it and they end up actually changing the message. Next procedure that you need to make sure you do is log the message into your station log. It's suggested the ICS 214, the activity log, makes an excellent station log. And it also is part of the official paperwork. Everything we do in an ICS setting, especially during an incident, becomes part of the official paperwork. That is everything, every scrap piece of paper if we write a note down on, everything we do becomes part of that documentation and has to be turned in. You cannot take it and just say, okay, here's my stuff, I'm taking it home. It stays there, it's part of the documentation and it's required to be maintained. So on the 214, you want to include the call sign of the station receive, receiving station, not just their tactical call, and we'll show this uh, later on. 
so you get a better idea what this looks like. You also want the actual call sign of the sender. And that would be, for example, if Stacy's sending the message. I want to make sure that I say that even though she might be working logistics, it might be at a logistics pit location, uh, and her tactical call sign is log one, I'm going to put log one slash W1LLO. Why? Because I know she was the operator that sent that message. So if there's an issue, we can go back and ask her about it. Okay. Keep all originals in message number order. Don't be just stacking them up in different ways. You stack them in message order. That's why we try to put a team out of three people because somebody's going to have to manage paperwork. Attach the replies to the original message. And remember, we're sending it over the air, so we're sending one part of it. We'll be sending items one through seven. We'll be receiving information to put in eight, but it's also going to have information one through seven on the form coming to us. And we'll show how that works. Remember, all messages, original messages, both from the transmitting and receiving stations, their official records. We've got to turn them in at the end of the ops period or the mission as appropriate. We don't want you to take these messages home for your files. Most of these are official documents, and in some cases, it may actually be in a foreign official use only document. That might be a message that's sent. And so they have to be retained and some security has to be maintained on them because not everything we deal with in ICS is intended for public release. For those of you that have the uh, access to Web EOC, for example, if you have been logging in and looking at the information on COVID-19, there's a lot of information there that's being shared. Some of it is deliberative, meaning we're talking about how this works. Is this something we can do? Here's an informational thing just for us internally to think about or to work on. It's not for public release. You know, and that's why everything we put in Web EOC is exempt from FOIA. And most of the times this stuff is except for um, legal actions. All right, so here's the header of the general message form that we have and what it looks like. As you see under number one, the incident names there, the incident may or may not be named. It may just be given a mission number. Um, however, 1A is your message number. 1B is the precedence. And for precedence, you don't have to write out operational immediate in that little bitty space. You can just put OI. Or if it's priority, put a P. And that's good enough because that gives the indicator of what it is. The message numbers are specific to the station, not the mission or event. What that means is that if I am net control and I'm generating messages, my message three that I send out doesn't mean that your message has to be number four that you send back. It's whatever the message number is for that location. Does that make sense? Hope everybody understands that. My message numbers, you know, we might have 10 different message ones but they're from 10 different locations. That's fine. It's that station's message number, that location. So you generate it for your assigned location or station. When you do a operational period change, meaning a shift change, if Stacy's coming off and Jim's going on duty, he does not restart that message number at one. If her message number is six and he's generating a message, the next message number for that location would be seven. It continues. It's based upon the location or that tactical call sign, not about, not a, about the individual. 
not your responsibility there. Make sure that you have that person sign that form. Make sure they sign line eight. Sign it, put their name to it and their title to it. That proves that they read it or wrote it and that it was their responsibility. That way, if you've sent it exactly as you got it written and there's an issue with it, it's not your problem, it's theirs. And it goes back to them. So make sure it's signed. On the reply, this is where it gets kind of changed for um, radio, for over the air. If you're running this across the hallway to somebody, which you might actually do in a real situation, you can run that form over. They can fill their spot in reply and sign the bottom of it, and it's done. It's easy. But if it's done over the air, we got to follow some different procedures. What I do and what we recommend being done, uh, it's pretty standard. Most people do it, and we'll show an example of it is in the reply on the original message, put the date, time, and the response, the responses received, along with the sending, receiving station call signs in the reply section. And we'll show you how that looks. When transmitting over the air, remember transmitted at writing speed, not reading speed, slow down. If I was to transmit the next st statement to you, there's no way at reading speed, you could not write this down fast enough. Transmit about three to four words, repeat the last two to three, then move on. How many people wrote that down as I said it? You couldn't follow me. So it's transmit about three to four words, about three to four words. Repeat. Repeat the last two or three. Last two or three. Then move on. S slowing down, repeating words lets people make, write the sentence down effectively. If it's a complex word, spell it, spell it phonetically. If the word has different spellings, but the same meaning, especially with names like Kathy, spelled with a K or a C, spell it out phonetically. If in doubt, just spell it out. Pause. Don't just go item one, here it is, item two, item three. Pause. Give people a chance to catch up. He may remember what you said, the receiver, and in the last couple of things of writing it down. So just give that slight pause. When you've completed items one through six, which is the header, once that's complete, you state, Break for text. Alan. Yeah. David has a question. Okay. What's uh, the question? If you were using WinLink, how do you handle the signature of the originator? Okay. We'll get into the WinLink because in WinLink, a lot of what you do is normally you, this will be PDF'd and is sent by WinLink a lot of times. It's just sent as an attachment. And so you'll get that back. But we're going to do a whole series on WinLink, um, hopefully in the summer, uh, if I can get enough time away from what I'm currently doing to sit down and put that presentation together. We will do a WinLink uh, thing late summer. All right. Good question, David. I've got it written down. We will get answers and get that set up right. All right. The message recipient may provide their own response in the reply section of the ICS 213 you present them. Remember when you're receiving this, if I'm the net control, I'm sending a message and Stacy is in logistics and she's receiving it. 
she's going to write all this information down and item in blocks one through seven on the ICS form. Then that's going to be taken to the individual it's supposed to go to, whoever it happens to be, and that's going to get handed to them. They may and probably will write their response in the reply section and sign it. Make sure they do sign it if they put anything in that reply section because it's not done till it's signed. When you get it back, you have to send that information. The problem is that you become the originator of a message that station does. So at that point in time, you've got to fill out a new 213 with a complete header. And you can do that based upon the header you already have from the original inbound message. You just start switching things and then add your message number to it. And we'll show how that happens. Me as the receiving station, when that happens, I'm getting this information. I'm going to put in the subject line, if I'm sending this, Stacy's going to send it back to me. The subject line for her is response, message number, whatever it happens to be, dated, the date of that original message. And we'll show that to you here real quick. All right. In the reply section, all you do is copy the information from the reply section and put that in the message section. Whatever that person respond, wrote down, you just move that up to the message section, to section seven on the new message you're sending. Since they've assigned the original message, since they've already signed it, you don't have to ask them to sign the one you're sending. You just attach them together. It's that simple. They just get attached. Assist them in creating brief to the point messages and responses. Remember, brevity works. All right, so here's the message that was sent out originally during the con when we started this COMEX. As you see, it's COMEX 20-2, message number was one, precedence routine. It went to all stations, it came from me, asking station capabilities, the date was 9 April 2020, the time that the message was generated. And then here's the message, a name, it would be signed, and the person's title. That's the message you're sending out. That's what you're responsible for, making sure it's generated at your station or location every time you send a formal piece of traffic. It has to be that set up. That's your responsibility. When she sends me the response, and this is how your response to those questions should look. Not, you don't need to repeat the question. You know, question one up here was, you know, the message said report via voice message or station status, one when link capable. You don't need in your response to come down here and go, when link capable, yes. Just one, you're replying to a message that sender of the message already knows what those items are. So it's yes, HF, UHF, VHF. Two, yes. Three, yes, generator. Four, yes, HF, VHF, UHF. Make sure it's signed. In this case, the person, I'm an operator or a communicator, they needed to sign it and they dated it. That's what you might see. And if you get that portion filled out, what you do is you take it and you put it in a new message. So when I go to send my reply back to this person, this is Ima. Ima is going to send me her reply. And so she's got, again, the header set up, COMEX, but this happens to be message three for her. Routine, it's coming to, to me, it's coming from her. Subject, response, message one, dated 9 April 2020. 
that tells me that she's responding to my message number one from that date. Now I go into the file that's sitting there waiting for the response and I pull that message out. And here's the, what she sends me. Yes, HF, VHF, UHF, yes, yes. Well, what did she forget? Generator, okay? But that's got written here, right? You forgot that. You gotta copy it exactly as it's given. It was given like this. You've got to make sure you have that generator in there, that copied in there. Okay. And even if they signed it, which they wouldn't, they'd be signing the first one, right? Here, the signature's on file because you've attached the bottom message, but make sure you copy it directly. Now me, I've got the original message, right? Asking the questions. I'm taking that on a new 213 with all that top information for tracking. And all I'm doing here is writing message replied 12 April 2020 at 1800 hours. It was transmitted by W4 IAM. It was received by W1 HRC. That tells me who sent the message, who received the message. That's accountability and tracking. And that's very, very important in these messages. Oh, we're almost done, guys. So remember, attach the relevant reply messages to the original. Just staple them together. They go in the file. Once you've got a complete message, you've got the message you sent, you've got the reply, you staple those two ICS 213s together. If it's more stations than just one, you may have you know, three or four but you staple them all together or paper clip them together and they get stuck in the official file. Log those messages as they are transmitted and received. Use the ICS 214 for this. It's an excellent document for it. Transmit at writing speed, not reading speed. And remember at the end of your message, once you sent items one through seven, especially one or seven or what is it nine? Once you've sent item seven, eight, nine, and 10, which is the signature and all that down below, once you've completed all that and you're done transmitting that message, say message complete, any fills. What that tells the receiving station is there's no more, I'm done. If you need me to tell you or repeat something, now's your time to ask. And that's all that means, very quick, message complete, any fills. If I need you to repeat something, I'll ask you to repeat it. And I may tell you, repeat item three. Or it might be, repeat all after some word. All after this word. Now you repeat everything after that word. You know. And we'll do another thing all on traffic handling and how that works at some point if people are interested in it we can do more on zoom like this here's the activity log i know that looks really really tough uh, but that's one that's fully completed let me zoom in on it and here's what it looks like can you see that hopefully good you're going to have the incident name in this case it's covid19 the operational period and that is basically your shift whatever that operational period is. In this case, we operated from 0800 to 1700. Your name, your duty position, your home agency, which is Forsyth County Oxcom. And then if you've got anybody else assigned to your team, you can list them all here. In this case, Stacy's on and she's a logistics one is her position and Jim's on the group and he's a safety, he's assigned to safety. So down here, you see where we noted our duty period, 0800, duty period start, station open, WS4FC, in parentheses command, that's your tactical call sign, slash who the operator is, W1HRC operator. That tells us when we go back and look at these documents, 
who was operating that station during that shift. Message 12. At 10, 10, 12 in the afternoon, we sent message 12. It was transmitted to W1LLO, log one. That was her tactical call sign. So that, again, we know that message 12 was transmitted, and we know the time it was transmitted. Message six was received from WA4NOT safety. That was a reply to message three. That's a reply to my message or our station's message. It was his message six replying to my message three. Make sense? That's his message, our message. Then later we get a message being received. It's message eight received from W1LLO. But what did we forget? We'd forgot her tactical call sign. Whoops. Okay, so we got to make sure we're accurate in our log. At 1351, we did a general announcement. We announced the safety message, which they want us to do occasionally. So that's just a general announcement of the safety message. At 1522, we received a request for additional logistics communications personnel. It wasn't a formal message. But it was a request, hey, we need more people over here. Can we get three more folks? So we mark in here. They requested additional. We assigned three personnel. As requested, their ETA is 30 to 45 minutes. Tracking what's going on, significant events. And then since we had a quiet afternoon at 1700, the duty period ended. However, the new operator, K4, OLD was our relief. That's who's relieving me coming on duty next. As you can see from the log, it works very well as a station log. And it'll even work that way for HF operations if we're doing HF. Makes it easy because you don't have to duplicate effort. You can use this form and have everything you do from your communications standpoint on one document. So that's the 213 and a little bit of the 214 um, with, and we did it relatively quickly. So are there any questions? I can actually give you other shots of these forms if you want to look closer. Ron. Yeah, go ahead. John had a question. Okay. Uh, what is the procedure for letting the radio drop in the middle of a transmission? Okay, again, anytime you're transmitting, if you're transmitting a long message, you know you've got a repeater timeout. You don't, and you really want to be short. So drop it whenever you would take a natural break in a sentence. And if you have to just send one sentence at a time, that's fine. Um, but for sending what we're, we're sending out, for example, I could pretty much go through sections one to three on the form. And I don't know if I'm sharing that or not. I hope I am. I'm not. Let's see if this shares. There we go. Items, so, you know, one, to three, you could probably do before you would have to let the repeater drop. And you don't need to set necessarily go item one or block one, incident name. Just say block one, COMEX 20-2, COMEX 20-2. Message number one. That I would repeat, just so they're clear that it's a message number. Precedence, routine. These two, instead of saying 1A and 1B, I would more than likely just state out. Message number one, precedence, routine. Two, all stations from 
W1 HRC or Harlan W1 HRC dash Oxcom Energy. Again, at writing speed. If you do those three, let the repeater drop, then you can do the next three and break for text. If you're on HF, you can pretty much do one through six with no problem. Always break before you do the actual message, break for text. That gives the person the opportunity to come back and say, hey, I need you to fill in something up here. I need some information I didn't get in the header. Then you give them the message. Once you've completed that, then you go text follows and you give them the text. You finish up this and you're good to go. Now, remember I talked about and said, this is my initial message that went out. We do the message, we have it sent out. I'm getting a response back. Well, I get that response and it's on, let me see which one it's sent on. There we go. Ima sent me her message, right? Yes, 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 et cetera. I would take this and attach it to my original message. And in that, I would come down in the reply section Message replied 12 April 2020 at 1800. Who transmitted it? Who received it? Um, Attach the two messages together. Okay. Harlan. Yeah. Do you state that you're letting the radio drop or do you just do it? You just do it. You do not state it. And uh, there's no need to say, you know, dropping a repeater, I'm going to let it drop. You just, you hit that point and you stop, okay? Because if I can do one through three at the end, when I say Oxcom manager, Oxcom manager, ion key. Let the repeater do its thing, key back up. Station capabilities, subject, station capabilities. Date, niner. April 2020, time 1359, 1359. During, when you're giving the date, when you're giving the time, you do not need to say figures in front of that because everybody understands that date is going to be mixed. Time is going to be in figures. The only time you would use the word figures would be, for example, in COMEX up here. You would say COMEX figures 20-2. Let's people know you're going from alpha to numeric. You know, very simple. Okay, any other questions? Uh David is asking, do you log tactical messages? Yes. In the ICS 214, in this form here, this request here, down here where you see the 1522, request, received request for additional logistics communications personnel. That's tactical message. Hey, we need help. We need it now. Okay, not a formal message. This was a tactical message. So we turned around and assigned them three personnel as requested and gave them an ETA. You know, everything significant in this activity log. And what I encourage people to do when they're completing these in the beginning till you get used to doing it and what you put in it, just log everything. Just log it all. Trust me, it, you won't get in trouble for it. And you'll learn really what to put in it later and how to shorten them up as to what's significant and what's not. Do you need to put in there that I, I went for a bathroom break? No, because you got relief operators. You do need to note, though, 
if I go take a lunch break, say at noon in here and, and so forth, and Sam was my relief, I would need to note somewhere in here that operator NI4TG is now operating a radio while I took my hour or my break to go eat lunch. Okay, and then note when I took back over again. So you do have to note that because that's significant. All right, any other questions? Because we're getting, we're running into an hour and that's about the timeline I wanted to run max on. Okay, well, I hope that the meeting is useful like this. I think it can be used as a training platform in the interim. Uh, for some of the training, we can actually do our training like this if people are up for it. Um, I encourage you to send me an email. Let me know what you thought of it. And if it's well received and people want to do this, um, this could be done once a month where we could just pick a topic. And in lieu of the uh, net, maybe just run this on a Thursday night and move it to eight o'clock, move it one half hour early. So we just go nine, eight to nine and be done with it. Cause I know after nine gets into bedtimes for some people like Stacy. Um, so anyway, any other questions guys, thank you much for what we've done tonight. I hope you did get something out of it and didn't fall asleep. I see Jim over there sleeping. I'm talking about register KB4SJ. No, which Jim? I was saying KV4SJ. He's shaking his head no at all. Okay, guys. Um, I appreciate it. Everybody did a great job. I see Jim KJ4 FIN took copious notes. There it is. Copious notes. We're going to put this up on the website. I'll get it in a PDF format to uh, Terry and let him put it up. If you do go to the W4NC.com, com web page go to the um aries tab the oxcom tab let me see if i've got that up still um and let me share this screen and show you what i'm talking about if you're not familiar with it um there is the club's website if you go down to the Oxcom Aries documentation and forms tab, which is what I'm on. Down at the bottom, right, or first off, all your forms you need are right here and are all fillable. The ICS 217, however, is blank. The one that we have completed is not for public knowledge and cannot be put up on the website. It will be issued to you. And we ask that you not give it out because it's for official use only. You have operations documents. This is where your script is. This is where your task book is. If you need one, your SOP, go kit, that controller stuff, everything you need. And we're adding more information as we give classes. But what I was getting to is right down here at the bottom. About two years ago, we did a on-air presentation of the 213 and traffic handling. It came in three parts. Pull those down. They're there for you to look at and review and to learn from. Okay? So all that information is there. Everything we ever do, we stick on the web page. All right, guys, that's it for the night. Um, anybody have any other questions? Good deal. Thank you all for joining us. Arlen, if that's officially closing the net, I'm going to shut down the recording at this point. If that's well, okay. All I was going to do was get on the uh, uh, repeater and go ahead and formally close it down. We didn't do that before we left it open in case anybody wanted to jump in and ask information. So we've been holding that frequency. Stacy hasn't heard anybody, has she? Or Jim, neither one of you. Okay. okay. So appreciate it, guys. We're going to shut down. Everybody have a great night, safe weekend. And uh, remember, even though we're opening up, we still want to social distance. We still want to try to keep this stuff down. 
And so don't go having big wild parties unless you invite me. Okay, uh, then I'm going to officially close the recording, but we can continue here and chat as long as anyone wants to. Exactly. And Let WS4 me make the announcement. WS4FC to make it official. WS4FC is closing the session.